Welcome back to Test Lucky, the YouTube channel where you can follow the adventures of Lucky the Tesla and where you might hear roosters crowing in the background of this video because we are filming at the Big Pine Key Tesla Superchargers. I'm Jen. Carly is at school. Hi, Carly. Please leave a comment, Carly, and let me know you're watching this video. Sometimes when I'm filming about boring topics like tires or battery health, I'll film when Carly's at school and I trust that she will watch this video. Let me know, Carly. Okay, today's video all about Lucky's battery and our battery health after six years of ownership. Actually, only about three and a half years of ownership for us, two and a half years for owner number one because we bought Lucky used. Lucky is a 2016 P90D Model X and we do enjoy our free supercharging and enjoy, I mean, we enjoy, we love our free supercharging for life. And Lucky has been no stranger to superchargers. I don't know how often owner number one used the superchargers or if he mostly charged at home, but we have been on so many road trips relying on the superchargers to get around the country. And we have free supercharging for life. So if I happen to be at a shopping plaza and there's superchargers, I mean, I will likely just plug in, even if I just get an extra 10, 15, 20% battery, because hey, you know, why not? It's free. So we're gonna analyze the data after 108,000 miles in Lucky the Tesla and see if this behavior with our supercharging has had any significant impact on the battery. We're going to look at the data and I will welcome your comments and your thoughts on if our battery is in good health or if it's starting to decline or if it's declined uh, beyond what is considered average or acceptable, you know, in the Tesla community. So before we get to the six year battery health data, though, there is some other data I want to share with you about these local Tesla superchargers. So back on September 14th, I posted a video that the fastest charge we had seen yet was 138 kilowatts, not that fast. And I was a little bit perplexed by these new V3 250 watt superchargers, why I wasn't seeing faster charging speeds. So then we had some really, really interesting comments from some great viewers. First, Don Gortner commented, do you set the navigation to the Tesla supercharger to precondition the battery? And the answer is yes, we do that every time. We always have the superchargers programmed in the navigation system. So then a shout out to Don and thank you for that comment too, by the way, and shout out to Cabo Mix, who also posted a great, great useful comment, made a great observation from watching our channel. Cabo Mix noted that we indicated we live only 10 miles away from these Tesla superchargers, and he said it takes 30 minutes to precondition the battery to the best possible condition to receive a fast charge. And I did not know that. So I started experimenting. And sure enough, if we come straight from home to the superchargers, even with navigating to the superchargers, preconditioning the battery, it doesn't, the charge doesn't jump as high as if we're coming from Key West or say Miami, and we've had a full 30 minutes of drive with the superchargers programmed into the navigation to precondition the battery. So thumbs up to that comment, that tip. It really works. If you want to make sure that you're getting the fastest charge when you go to the superchargers, make sure you start that preconditioning 30 minutes before. It definitely works. Let me show you this next clip. You will see what is now Lucky's new fastest charge on the Big Pine Key superchargers. We made it up into the 150s, we made it up into the 160s, and then this one magical day, Lucky charged all the way to 171 
kilowatts. It was awesome. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to see that we had gotten all the way to 171 kilowatts uh, in the charge. So does the fact that Lucky hit 171 kilowatts on a charge have anything to do with Lucky's overall battery health at six years? I think that it does, that if the battery is in good health, it'll have a better chance of hitting a high speed like this. But I want to hear your comments in below. Does a, reaching 171 kilowatts an hour, is that a good sign for Lucky's battery? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. The other data I want to put up now is that I am keeping track because I love my data. I especially love my Tesla data. I am now keeping track of the fastest charge that we get on each and every stall here in Big Pine Key. I've created this graphic and every so often in future videos, I will update you on if we, how fast we get on each stall and if we can break our new record of 171 kilowatts. So let's get to the six year battery health data. I mentioned 108,000 miles, a lot of supercharger usage. The other thing that I wanna mention is that we typically charge to 90%. That's what I keep the, uh, the max set to in the vehicle. The Tesla recommendation is not to charge higher than 80 to 90% on a daily basis to preserve the battery health. Now, probably once every two months, I'm gonna estimate about six times per year, I do charge to 100%. That's usually on the eve of leaving for a road trip or leaving to go to Miami uh, back and forth in a day, something like that. It's not very common, but I do do it, I'm gonna guess about six times a year. But 90% is our daily routine when we charge at home in our garage. Okay, so here is the data on Lucky's battery health. At the time of sale, the range on Lucky, and this is rated range, not ideal range. I don't really know what ideal range um, means. I don't think it's very real world. If you think otherwise, please let me know. We can absolutely discuss rated versus ideal range uh, in the comments if you would like. Uh, but initial range for Lucky when she first came off the production line was 250 miles. When I first got Lucky at 23,000 miles and I did a max charge to 100%, there was a range of 244 miles. So that's pretty good. In two and a half years, less than 25,000 miles, there was only a loss of six miles on a full charge. So then recently at the 108,000 mile mark, a full charge to Lucky got us to 231 miles of range. So we have lost uh, in three and a half years, we have lost 13 miles, 19 miles total in six years. And I did the math at 9.24% battery degradation in six years. So the warranty from Tesla on the battery is, and we're talking about the high voltage battery, the one that sits on the floor of the car, underneath the car, the, the big old battery, is 150,000 miles or eight years, whichever comes first. For Lucky, 150,000 miles is definitely gonna come first. So I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on any further battery degradation as we get towards the end of the warranty for this important uh, piece of our car. I'm gonna check this again at 125,000 miles and then probably again around 147, 148,000 miles. I believe that if you lose more than 30% of your original range or your original battery capacity, then that's when you have a warranty claim with Tesla. Has anyone experienced that? Anyone watching this video have any experiences that you can share about replacing the high voltage battery in your Tesla, please let us know in the comments below. So many interesting things to discuss here as it relates to battery and range, battery health, 
and battery warranties. I just love it. Thank you so much for watching Test Lucky, and we look forward to seeing you in our next video. Safe travels. Bye-bye.